Aloha and welcome to the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. I am your host, Gwendolyn Harris. My guest today has been a professional musician, band leader, teacher, composer, producer, and contractor for 40 plus years. He has traveled extensively performing internationally. A few, a few highlights have been performances at the Hollywood, at the Hollywood Bowl, Carnegie Hall, Irvine Metal Shoreline Amphitheater, Aloha Stadium, Tokyo Dome, and the Oneness Center in Golden City, Chennai, India. My guest has shared the stage with Tony Bennett, Larry Carlton, Lee Rittenauer, Jaka Khan, the Doobie Brothers, Isaac Hayes, Tower of Power, Pauline Wilson, Michael Paolo, Sheila E., Brian Culberson, Dave Koz, James Ingram, Gloria Gaynor, <laughs> Ray Parker Jr., the Captain and Tennille, Sheena Easton, Mar the, Martha Reeves and the Vendellas, Ben Vereen, Bobby Caldwell, Rick Braun, Peter White, Mindy Bear, Warren Hill, and Michael Link Linkton. He has also worked with Matt Katengoob and the Honolulu Symphony Pops, Don Ho, Kalapana, Kapala, and countless others. <laughs> in 1999, his solo record for Every, Every Heart was nominated for Best Contemporary Album in Hawaii, in Hawaii. This musician was awarded the 2000 Nahuku Hano Hano Best Jazz Album for Hula Joe and the Hut Jumpers. This producer and musician has eight CDs to his credit. His latest titled Coco with Maui singer, songwriter, Ron Kuala O. Oh. He is currently performing with artists Kumu Hula, Napua Greng, Greng, as a music educator. My guest travels the world teaching music through the ukulele. Let's find out more about this music man and welcome Mr. Zanik Kapala Lindsay to the show. Welcome. Ooh. I'm out of breath. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I am out of breath. You did that well, Gwen. Aloha. I, I, Thank you for having me. Is the show over? I mean, <laughs> Woo. No, okay. Woo. But you know, everybody needs to, everybody needs to hear that. Everybody Thanks. needs to hear that. Thanks. I know for one thing, you know, I, I go to a lot of concerts here, jazz mm -hmm. concerts, mm -hmm. and I see you. Yep. So I can definitely say, people, that these, some of these people I've seen him with. Okay. All right. Now, what made you want to start playing music? I was watching the Ed Sullivan show when I was five years old, and I saw the Beatles. I think a lot of people my age were influenced by that because there were only three channels on at the time, and everybody gathered around the TV on a Sunday night, and that was the show because um, there, was, there were comedy acts, ventriloquists, all kinds of entertainment, and uh, it was just a family show. But the Beatles came on and tore it up. And, that started me thinking, wow, whatever they're doing, they're creating a, a, you know, a mess here in the mm -hmm. audience. People are going crazy for that. And then I started to listen to radio, and I felt rhythm. I would grab pencils and chopsticks and drum on my transistor radio mm -hmm. you know, with the beat. And, and that's, I think that's when the bug started. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> now, I know that you play, of course, the guitar. I do. And the ukulele. I do. But mm -hmm. what other instruments do you play? I dabble in a little of uh, piano, but I wouldn't call myself a piano player. No. And I'm a singer okay. as well. And I consider that an instrument as well. And you'll get to hear that <laughs> <laughs> later on. Tell us about your original song, Heat of the Night, that won first place in 1987 in a national songwriting contest sponsored by Capitol Records and Budweiser. That's a great story. I was in college. I was going to Cal State Northridge okay. getting a music degree. And uh, I was a songwriter at that time, and I entered a song, uh, and it was for uh, BRE, Black Radio Exclusive. Mm -hmm. So I didn't send a picture in, and I just sent the tape. And it was it's a kind of a soul ballad, kind of heartbreak song, and they loved it. So they brought me into the finals, and they didn't know that I wasn't black. So <laughs> they looked at the picture, and wait a minute, uh, this was so, you know, it was too late. I was already in the finals, but that was the song. And I put it on my first CD for Every Heart. Oh, wow. I'm going to have to listen to that. I'll have to get your copy. Okay. I'll get your copy. All right. Now, what type of music do you like playing the best? You play all types of music. 
I do. All types. What is your favorite? My favorite to listen to and what I aspire to playing better in my golden years would be jazz. I'm a, I'm a big jazz fan. I grew up listening to a lot of rock and roll, you know, mm -hmm. the Beatles. Then we got into Hendrix. Then we got into Led Zeppelin. And then we, I, I found uh, R&B. So I started listening to Stevie Wonder and Earth, Wind, and Fire. Mm -hmm. And I sort of merged those styles into something that I, I feel I like to play like. Right. You know, it's a blend of those two. I love the blues. I love it all. As, as long as the music has some soul and feeling to it, you know, it doesn't sound mechanical. Uh -huh. So Hawaiian music does that for me, too. It's a beautiful music. You know, culturally, I understand it a little better now, and uh, I enjoy playing those kind of music as well. As well. I don't have a favorite. I'm sorry, Gwen. I didn't answer your question. <laughs> I'm not trying to avoid it. I, I, I really believe that um, music language is the same throughout right. all the styles. Right. Okay, now you work at the University of Hawaii. What do you do there? I work for the uh, Maui uh, division. I, I go over there and I teach at the um, Institute for Hawaiian Studies. They're developing a two-year program for people that don't want to enter into a music degree program, which is a very intense classically, mu classical music-oriented type of degree. This is just teaching people practical hands-on information, how to read a little bit of music, how to understand how to, uh, the protocol of being in a studio, mm -hmm. and uh, fundamental things that can help them get through on a gig, how to contract yourself out, how to use internet. It's a really good program. Awesome. Yeah. Now, tell us about your work with the Ukulele Guild of Hawaii. Ooh, that's vast. I, I made a conscious decision years ago to give back to the community in whatever way I could, and I think the best way I can offer some help in that way is to teach. I've acquired a lot of knowledge over the years of just hands-on experience, being on the road, traveling a lot, and mm -hmm. now uh, I, I want to just offer um, access to music uh, that anyone can, can, can do. And ukulele is the simplest instrument to pick up and instantly make music on. So I, I, I understand that, and now I, I travel. I work with the Ukulele Guild and the, its president, Kimo Hasi. I've been to Australia, Japan. There's been a ton of places we've been, we've been going to just to teach ukulele. Wow. And now I teach here. I, I, I work at Aliamanu Middle School. I teach at Tripler Hospital. Mm -hmm. I teach at the Shriners Hospital. I teach their nursing staff ukulele so they can play for the kids. Mm -hmm. It's sort of a music therapy kind of now, concept. What is the difference? Is there a major difference between the ukulele and the guitar? Oh, is yeah. it kind of hard? What's the, what's the differences between them? First of all, the size. Right. And, well, and, <laughs> and, and, the, um, and the number of strings. Okay. The number of strings on an ukulele are four, and the guitar starts with six. The tuning is a, a slightly different kind of tuning, so you have to um, learn the corresponding chords and things to each particular instrument. Um, but they're both from the string family, obviously, and they, um, they work well together. They sound mm -hmm. great together. That's why you hear a lot of it in, in not just Hawaiian music, but folk music, all kinds of stuff. Now, I understand you are also in another group called, <laughs> and it's your group, called oh, Zodiac Diamond. Yeah, that's the, that's the latest thing. And that's I, the latest thing. And Tell I, us about that. Sure. Uh, the group consists of Michael Grande mm -hmm. on keyboards. Conrad Kendrick on drums, George Coppage on bass, and Jason Gay on saxophone and flute. And, you know, as I, got, as I get older and continue to make music in these years, I want to just work with people that I get along with. Mm -hmm. You get thrown into a lot of situations, impromptu situations, where you don't know what you're going to end up with. But Everyone was handpicked because we've been old friends for at least now 25, 30 years. Mm -hmm. uh, Jason is my most recent you know, acquaintance, but Jason and I get along really well. So the chemistry of the band is great. We all love the same kind of music. The, the stuff that we do is uh, based in soul and R&B, and uh, we're writing music now, and we'll be playing some of that at our gig mm -hmm. coming up. And when is that? That will be April 19th, Friday, at Medici's. You hear that, everyone? Yep. You hear that, everyone? <laughs> you should be there, because I'll be there. Yeah. I'll yeah. be there, yeah. most definitely. Great. And if you have not heard this band play, they are awesome. 
They are awesome. Just be prepared <laughs> to dance. I can tell you that. I can tell you that too. And I, you know, to see Jason and all the band members, they are just they just really get into it, including including Zanuck here. You'll see him on his guitar, just just getting <laughs> doing his thing, yeah. just doing his thing. <laughs> so, what was the date of that again? April nineteenth. It's Friday night. It's going to be at Medici's from seven thirty to ten. And Medici's is in the Ma Manoa. Manoa Marketplace. Manoa Marketplace. Yeah. Okay. Lots of parking. Great venue. Very okay. nice, intimate venue. Okay. Now, is there anyone, if you could pick anyone, mm. any musician, is there anyone that you would like to collaborate with? Wow. <laughs> collaborate with? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. There's too many of them. There are too many of them. I like jazz musicians. I like a lot of rock musicians. I would love to write a song with Elton John. I mean, I really know Billy Joel or mm. those kind of people. And then there are musicians that I just want to have an experience playing with mm -hmm. and feel that upliftment of playing with someone of that caliber. Pat Metheny comes to mind. Mm. Herbie Hancock. Oh, yes. You know, of that caliber. Um, and I, Because I want to learn. I'm, a, I'm an eternal student. I want to continue growing as a musician. So... Whoever can give me that opportunity, that's that's what I'd like to well, do. Well, don't say it'll never happen. I know. You know. I know. And I'm open. And I'm open. and and you already have that wealth of experience. You've played with all of these these people. So don't mm -hmm. say it'll never happen. No, no. It's there's time. There's time. We go. We go. We go. <laughs> we're gonna. We're gonna see that. <laughs> we are. We are going to see that. Now, what are your thoughts? And I and I ask this of all my guests because it's 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 big to me. Okay, um, growing up in growing up in, you know, playing music in the school. Mm -hmm. Now they're taking it out to school mm -hmm. slowly, mm -hmm. so it leaves our our youth. It, it it's kind of challenging. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that, and what can we do? I think it's sad. I think it's unfortunate. Uh, I'm not sure what we can do. We need to reprioritize what, uh, you know, what we think. Kids will, will enjoy, and I, I know this firsthand now because I'm teaching mm -hmm. the seven to eight grade uh, levels, and uh, their music now is, comes in the form of technology. Everything mm -hmm. comes through their phone and their computers, and the real life experience of singing, interacting with instruments, that's something that's foreign to them. I yes. think that's a shame. Yes. So I'm doing whatever I can by teaching privately or in classrooms and, and giving them hopefully an opportunity to see the value of that. But I, you can't fight City Hall, as they say. There's yeah. a lot of bureaucracy <laughs> in the system. And um, I don't want to talk about political things, but I'm just saying that, yeah, I wish there were more opportunity because that's what gave me life and spirit, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and joy, here. joy for me in my years on the planet. That's mm -hmm. what I live for. So um, I don't know what they're afraid of. I don't know why they... That's the first thing to go. I'm not it, sure. It's it, it it is sad, and like I say, I asked that of all of my all of my um, guests that I have on the show, just because I want to know their thoughts and what are they doing and what mm -hmm. can we do mm -hmm. um, to you know to, to keep well, it in there some way. I I you know I I I feel for myself. I speak personally that I I, I want to be a mentor to any kids who are interested. Um, and, and parents who are supportive of their, their, those children. I, I would love to share what I know. Uh, I, there's, there's so Hold much. Hold that thought. Yeah. We got to go on a quick break. Okay. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that you know may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Yukari Kunisue, the host of Konnichiwa Hawaii, Japanese talk show on ThinkTech Hawaii. Konnichiwa Hawaii is all Japanese broadcast show. And it's streamed live on ThinkTech at 2 p.m. every other Monday. 
Thank you so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. I'm Yukari Kunisue. Mahalo. Aloha and welcome back to the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection with your host, Gwen Harris. My guest today is Mr. Zanuck Kapala Lindsay, and I am just so much enjoying talking with him because I see him all the time playing all over the place, mm -hmm. <laughs> on stage, every, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Now, before we went on the break, we were talking about the music um, in the schools and how gradually it was, it's, it's being taken out. Right. And right. you were saying... Well, then I, I, I was talking about being a mentor, and I mm -hmm. feel that there are many people my age who have been in music, fortunately, all their lives. Uh, and I think, I, want, I know, I, I plan to share this information now. Uh, and, and in the remaining years of me being on the planet, I, I, that's the only way that we're going to get music, uh, the interest of music again with the right. kids. If they, you give them a personal experience, an emotional experience, then... You know, I, I teach in several different locations, and I see a development of a, of a lifelong interest, as mm -hmm. you say, you know. And I feel great to be um, a, somewhat influential in that. So, you know, I, that feeling is very infectious, and I, I encourage more musicians to do that mm -hmm. if they have an opportunity. Yeah, that would be awesome. Who, I mean, whoever gets you as a teacher, I need to come take some lessons from you because I've always wanted to learn how to play Please, guitar. Please, come on, come on. I mean, I started playing the um, violin when I was younger, a mm -hmm. um, little bit of keyboards, yeah. um, clarinet, and then in college I played the flute and piccolo. And I mm -hmm. always said I really want to either go back to the keyboards or I really want to just learn how to guitar because then I can sit at home and just, you know, yeah. strum, you know, yeah. just, just play around with it. Yeah. Now, before, before you get ready to play something, mm -hmm. I want you to tell me about your experience in Cuba. Oh, you just got sure. back from Cuba, and I know the music there is like off the chain. Oh, it, I, there are no words to describe it. I'm, I'm wearing my, my Cuban shirt today in honor of that trip. I just got back a few days ago, and we spent four days in Havana. Mm -hmm. um, you still can't be a tourist there. I just want to make that clear. You just You can't just right in. You have to have an educational visa of some sort where there's an exchange. They call it a people-to-people -people visa. Okay. So I went on an educational visa, so I had to do activities which were not, you know, I didn't feel forced into anything. I got to go to schools, listen to these virtuoso kids playing flamenco music for mm. me. I went to uh, concerts and uh, jazz concerts to the Buena Vista Social Club oh, style of yes, music, yes. dancing, salsa. You did dancing. some salsa. Going. Did you do did some, some salsa? I did a little okay, bit. Right. Did a little bit. I'm not that great <laughs> at it, but I, you know, you have to down there. It's yes, just, you do. It's in the air. It's in the water. Uh, took a cooking class. So as long as your day is filled with these activities, you can get a visa and go. And I highly encourage anyone who's always think, thought about going there to go. That's on my bucket list. Yeah. It's so many of my friends have gone. Amazing. And the heart of the people um, remind me of the people over here uh, from Hawaii, too. Just very open and, 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 and genuine, and the hospitality is amazing. Uh, there's a lot of misconception. You know, we get media that slants stories for us over right. here. It's not the same. You go there, and you'll see how wonderful it is over there. They, there is a lot of poverty. But then you walk right into a time warp where you see all these old 50s cars, mm -hmm. and then you had the people, they're just relaxed, and it's just great. It's just great. Oh, wow. It's safe, too. People think there's a lot of crime because of the poverty, but you can walk the streets at night. It's the safest place. It's, 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 yeah. Did you share some of your music with them? I did. I did. I went to their, uh, and went to a music school. I, I brought over ukuleles to give to them. I knew I was going to oh, see nice. them. nice. So I brought ukuleles and some Chocolate macadamia nuts nice. for the kids, and I played a couple of songs, and uh, my fiance Stacy danced a hula while I, you know, oh. so we did a great exchange thing that day. Oh, it was beautiful. That's and awesome. when I presented the ukuleles, the kids started crying. Oh. They started crying because they get all of their instruments passed down. They're not in great shape, uh, but they're using it, you know, to the best of their, their ability, and they're they're amazing musicians wow. at young at a young age because the musician is the most revered um, position in, in the Cuban yes. society. 
Yes. Not the doctors and the lawyers, the Mus musicians. musicians. Yeah. Musicians. It's an well, amazing turnaround from coming up from over here. Yes. Well, yeah. speaking of musicians and music, are you going to play something for us? I here? can. I can do one. Uh, I'm going to do a song from my most recent CD. Now, it's been out for a couple of years now. Okay. And uh, Is that this one right that's here? That's that one right there. It's called Coco. Which, Coco in Hawaiian means blood. And Ron Koala Ao, who I, I partner with on this CD, is my cousin. We grew up together. And now he lives on Maui. But okay. um, our family always asked us to have a CD done before everybody passes away. So mm -hmm. that was our project. So here's a song called I'm Ready. I'm ready. Now that you're in my life. I can put away my fears about tomorrow I know your love is true So I give my heart to you Oh, I'm ready I'm ready No matter where the road might lead as long as I can feel you here beside me So let the heavens fall I won't care at all Because I'm ready I'm ready To let my soul break through after all the years, I'm not afraid to start again with you. Sometimes I may stumble along the way, but I can finally say goodbye to yesterday. If you're ready, won't you take my hand? And promise that we'll always be together Please whisper now As we take this vow I'm ready Please whisper now As we take our vow I'm ready. That was beautiful. Thanks. That was beautiful. I'm sitting here trying not to cry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I've, I'm, I've been a songwriter. That's a something that I, I don't know if I mentioned, but for a while now, uh, that's that's yeah, that's what brings me a lot of joy. Is writing, is, is writing songs, writing, writing music. music. Mm -hmm. Well, that was. That was beautiful. Like I don't even know what to say right now. That was <laughs> well, you have the CD now. You can check that, it out. Now I can. Now I can definitely check it out. Everybody, you need to go get this CD. Right. Um, <clears throat> I want to ask you yeah. a few more questions. Sure. What would you do, or what would you say? Because there's so many up and coming musicians mm -hmm. that are coming up, mm -hmm. and for some of them it's hard, mm -hmm. and some of them is not. <laughs> Right. You know? So what would you tell a new musician or up and coming musician coming up in the music? What advice, what, or I should say, what advice would you give a new musician or up and coming mm -hmm. musician in the music industry today? That's a good question. <clears throat> well, my advice has evolved through the decades. Back in the 80s, I would have said, get off of this island. And go mm -hmm. to Los Angeles, or New York, or Nashville, or a city where it's competitive, where you can learn um, the, you know, uh, learn a higher standard of playing music. Not to say that the music here is not that way, but people are just hungrier and willing to put in the extra work to get the get the job. I mean, right. or, and 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 
And there's a lot of that in those cities. And that was back in the 80s. So that's what I did personally. And I was telling everybody, you need to do the same. Uh, Bruno Mars did it. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I mean, that's, and a lot of kids from Hawaii did it. And, and they've excelled because there's really no difference. It's just the amount of work that you want to put in to get there. Um, so that's what's great about doing that. That's inspiring. But now, you know, uh, I, my, my advice would have changed a little because of the advances in technology. Things seem to come a little easier, although there's no avoiding the actual hard work that goes into practicing and playing. You can't avoid that, you know. I mean, if you're looking for celebrity, yeah, there are many roads to take now. You can get on TV instantly. You can create your own YouTube channel. And, and people are just going to be mystified because they're, they're just zoning out watching their phone or the, or the, or right. the computer. Right. So they'll stop on anything. But if we're talking about developing talent, yeah, you need to really work at the craft. You need to, that's, and I'm saying this to those potential students out mm -hmm. there, people who want to make it in the music business. There's a lot of sacrifice in doing that. And there's, um, yeah, it's a tough road. It's, mm -hmm. And um, I've, I feel like I'm lucky, as maybe people my age are who are still in music, and that when we got the bug, when I heard the Beatles, I knew that was it. That's all I wanted to do. There was no plan B. And mm -hmm. I, I stuck with it. And I didn't feel all of the hardship as much because I was in the Doing music. It. Yeah. yeah. Um, now it's easy. It's just easy to let that go. And I, I, you know, I'm not sure if they were really meant to be in music in the first place. Right. But you'll know if you feel that. Yeah, you'll know. Yeah, yeah, you'll know. Well, Zanuck, I thank you. Our time has come to an end. Oh, and, it's and too I, quick. I know, right? <laughs> I know. But I thank you so much Can for I come being. Back? Yes, okay. of course, I will. of course. I will. But I thank you so much for coming on Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. And your group plays with Zodiac Diamond, April nineteenth, Medici's, seven thirty. Be there. Be there, baby. Be there. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, everyone, for tuning in to the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. Tune in next week with me, your host, Gwendolyn Harrison. Aloha.